this video I will show you a special camera from Japan. It's an analog fully mechanical rangefinder panorama camera. That means it takes a picture by turning the lens. Behind the lens is therefore no shutter, but a simply split which turns together with the lens. This camera was manufactured by Panon Camera Shoko Co. Ltd. and is called Wide Lux F6. It can capture a 140 degree panorama with the 26mm f2.8 lens. The manufacturing of the F6 models began around 1970. Since then approximately 3000 examples were built. Panon Camera produced their first panorama camera back in 1958. The company eventually went out of business in the early 2000s after suffering a fire. This camera has all the functions you would expect from an analog mechanical camera. At the top there is the rewind dial, the shutter dial, a disc to set a aperture from f2.8 until down to f11, a spirit level, the shutter button and finally the dial to wind the camera. At the bottom there is the thread for your tripod and a button for unlocking the rewind style. Now I'm gonna show you how to load the camera. You need a normal 35mm roll film. Before we insert the film, we dial the ISO in, so you don't forget it. In my case I've got an ASA 200 film. To put the film in, unlock the cover and remove it then. Pull the rewind style up and insert the film. Lock it in place by pushing the rewind style back. Now pull the film a little bit out and put it around the first spool. The film goes then along the cylindrical exposure gate and then underneath the second spool. Pull the film up while making sure to don't move the gear. Turn the last spool until the nub gets visible. After that pull the film around the gear and behind the last spool. Now this part gets a little fiddly. Attach the film at the little knob and make sure the film goes around by turning the spool. Now you wind the camera until the film fully covers the spool. Then close the gate and remember to lock it again. After that wind the camera, release it and do this again. The counter will jump to zero. Release it again and now you're ready to take your first picture. If you found a spot where you would like to take a picture, put up your tripod with the camera. You can then adjust the composing with the help of the rangefinder. To level the position, use the spirit level on the top of the camera. If you're ready, wind your camera 
the counter will go to 1. Now dial in your aperture. I will set it all the way down to f11, because at the moment it's very bright. Then you have to meter the light. Therefore I use the app locks. Simply set the ISO according to the film speed. Then you have to set the aperture, which you have dialed in in the camera. Now at the upper right corner you will see the shutter speed you need. You must dial in the shutter speed after winding the camera, otherwise you may damage the mechanics. Also don't force the shutter dial. If it don't turn, just dial it back and try it again. Now you're ready to take the picture. Press the shutter button and the camera will start to turn the lens and expose the film. You have taken your first image. Just for your information, you can also take a picture without the tripod. But put your fingers behind the lens, otherwise they will end up in the picture. So here are a few sample shots. I have taken them with a Kodak Gold 200 film. If you want to wind, but the dial is blocked, your film is full. You can also hear the stretching of the film if you listen carefully. With this 36 exposure film I've got 19 panoramas. With a 24 exposure film you will get 13 panos. For rewinding the film you have to press the button under the camera and turn the rewind dial simultaneously. This process can take a few minutes and needs some strength to finish. At the end you can hear the film leaving the different spools. If you don't feel any resistance anymore, open the back of the camera and unlock the film. Now you can develop the exposed film by yourself or bring it to your local photo store. Make sure they don't cut the film as a normal 35mm roll because the pictures are wider than the normal one. After your film was developed, you can scan it. I photograph them with my camera, then I open them in my editing program, invert them and correct the colors and the blacks. Afterwards, I stitch the three images together, crop them and this is the final image. The quality of the lens is pretty good. It's sharp even in the corners. But there is a problem with flaring, especially because the lens is turning. This causes stretched flares and leaves visible lines. And even a more visible line gets created when the sun gets out of the frame and the ghosting ends. On the left side you can also unfortunately see my fingers, because I hold the camera in the wrong way. Here you can see a vertical panorama. The nice thing about this camera is that it physically creates the panorama. So you don't get any stitching lines, even if the subject is moving like this waterfall. So this was my video about the White Lux F6. I hope you like it and if you have a question, leave a comment.